Here, uh, you can learn Ukrainian only with the help of the Ukrainian Institute London mm. and me, and that's it. What do you think about UK London? Do you like London? I came here not just uh, to start my life from scratch. When you came to UK first time, you went to Oxfordshire. Yes. You can do this even first, but I will do it better. Yeah, many of my um, Ukrainian friends whom I met here, mm. they uh, came back to Ukraine. Have you tried contact in uh, the Ukraine embassy? I did. And? Nothing. <laughs> if you want to learn the beautiful Ukrainian language, if you want to have this connection with it, you're welcome to join my Ukrainian language courses. When, when are you going to publish this podcast? Uh, this podcast will probably be out in a month's time. In a month? Mm. <laughs> I will send them a message tomorrow. <laughs> Hi, right, ladies and gents, this is um, season two, episode four on Koza Talks. Uh, today we have a very, very special guest, uh, Ina. Uh, Ina is from Ukraine, from Kherson. She's been um, teaching Ukrainian language. Yes, Ukrainian language. Second language learners. Um, to foreigners. She's been doing it for seven years. She started in 2016. Now she's in UK, London, capital, uh, capital city in, in, in UK. So I'm happy to have her on my podcast, Koza Talks on uh, Radio Kozachov Studio, first Ukrainian um, uh, first Ukrainian station here in UK in West London. If you didn't know, you can actually download them on your app and listen to Ukrainian radio. radio. So I'm happy to have her here. And the reason why I have her is because her story is very interesting. And I think you'll find it interesting because I know many of you may write to me, say, I want to study Ukrainian and not just study Ukrainian, learn Ukrainian because you want to marry a Ukrainian woman you or, or, or a guy, or you want to do something with business studies or whatever the reasons is. Anyways, I have, I have her in the studio today and we're going to talk about her story. We're going to ask her, uh, we're going to ask her three things. We're going to ask her her life in uh, in Ukraine, uh, her um, um, arrival to UK, um, how how she started. When she came here, she went to Oxford. Her story that she has an interesting story. Now she's in London as well. That's a story here as well. Anyways, we're going to jump, we're going to straight, we're going to dive in straight to where I'm not going to talk uh, furthermore. You know, thank you very much for being in Koza, uh, Koza Talks podcast and here in Radio Koza Talks studio. You know, first question to you is who are you and tell us a bit about, you, about yourself. Thank you. Uh, first of all, thank you for inviting me. Um, it's an honor and um, um, I'd like to tell you a little bit about myself. Uh, my name is Ina Sopranchuk. I'm from Kherson. Um, I was uh, born and raised there. And uh, uh, I have a bachelor degree in philology and master's degree in translation. And uh, when I started at um, uh, this uh, postgraduate, uh, I decided to start teaching because I like it so much. And I started my career with a teaching uh, English uh, to Ukrainians. Um, and then um, when I didn't have enough time to teach in person, I decided to teach more online. Mm -hmm. And therefore, I found a very useful um, language platform, uh, Preply. Uh, it was developed by the Ukrainian startuppers. And um, I uh, signed up there, I created my portfolio as a teacher, and I saw the, um, an option to teach Ukrainian language for second language learners. And I thought, okay, why not? I tried it and I received many requests from the people from the whole world. They wanted me to teach them um, beautiful Ukrainian language. And it was in 2016. I like it so much, so therefore I decided to develop uh, this project more. I created my Instagram account, Speak Ukrainian Language. I started recording different video lessons, how to say hello in Ukrainian, how to say thank you, etc. Uh, then I created my YouTube channel. It is also called Speak Ukrainian. And uh, it was in uh, 2019. Then I created the first textbook. My team started to grow. And now I have a YouTube um, channel. It has almost uh, 50k subscribers. I have like a set of the flashcards, uh, textbooks, app, um, a school. I have a team of more 15 teachers. They are all prof professional native teachers from Ukraine. Um, and uh, I taught my Ukrainian language course at Oxford University this year. And I was the first teacher who did that. And uh, also I launched my Ukrainian language courses here in London two weeks ago. So that's my um, 
story. Amazing. Amazing. That is crazy. That, no, 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 that's serious. That's, that's amazing. I want to ask you, Ina, before all this, why, why did you teach or teaching uh, foreigners uh, English, uh, sorry, Ukrainian language? Why? Um, you know, um, I think we should go a little bit deeper into that. Um, I want to tell you that my mom, she's a teacher of the Ukrainian language and literature. And she's a teacher at school. And she said, Ina, you will be a teacher after my dad body. So that's um, an idiom mm -hmm. <laughs> in Ukrainian language. So she didn't want me to go and to be teacher at school because it's a very stressful job and mm -hmm. it's not really well paid, you know. Mm -hmm. So I decided, okay, I will be a teacher, but I will be a teacher in my own school. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, but actually, I don't know. I just like teaching because my mom, she's a teacher. My grandparents were teachers. Somehow it is in my DNA and... I like it. Therefore, I <laughs> therefore I had to be like a translator, but it 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 is boring for me. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I like it. And um, when I started teaching people from the whole world uh, the Ukrainian language and culture, and they starting to do uh, their first steps in the Ukrainian, uh, and it fascinated me so much. They it inspired me so much. Um, and I'm so happy right now that in 2018, I did the right choice and started teaching Ukrainian and popularizing it, not mm -hmm. Russian or English. Mm -hmm. Yes. And uh, now my project is super successful. And of course, um, it sounds weird because um, because of the full scale invasion, uh, people started um, to to explore more about Ukraine, its culture, language, and therefore they started to find m me on different social media, and that's how it became uh, very successful, and that's how my story started here in the UK. You know, when people look for you on social media, what uh -huh. do people usually type for them to uh, to find you? Uh, I don't know. Um, they they can uh, write something about the Ukrainian language, and they can find me easily. So, so if I go on Google and I say that I want to learn Ukrainian language, yeah. you'll be the top of the priority. Yes, you know, I, I would like to tell you a very fun story. Go on. So, <laughs> I use here uh, Bumble. It's a dating app. Yeah, yeah. And I started chatting with one guy there, and uh, by mistake, he uh, he he decided to delete an app, and he deleted our chat. And we just started our chat. And uh, and he was upset that he just lost a connection. Mm. But he just go, I don't know, he he, he Googled Ina Ukrainian mm -hmm. and he found me uh -huh. easily. You see, so a man if if a man likes a woman, he will find <laughs> he'll find it either any any means. And I said you're very lucky because I'm very <laughs> like mm. um public person. Otherwise you he wouldn't be able to find me. But yeah. Um so yeah, you can just uh, people they they write, okay, how to say hello in Ukrainian and they just find me mm -hmm. uh, via Google. Because um in my on my website we have a very big blog mm -hmm. and we wrote many articles. Mm -hmm about different stuff, about Ukrainian culture, about the holidays, whatever. And people, when they just uh, try to find some information, they can find um, uh, me. Or I have uh, one of the most uh, popular YouTube channel. And when people Google something, Google offers them to check out a video with me. Mm -hmm. And of course, it's easier to watch a video rather than read an article about some mm -hmm. difficult grammar explanation. You said uh, read a blog. You have a website as well? What's your website called? Speaky.com. Okay, so it's the same thing what is called on uh, Instagram, Speaky, Speak Ukrainian. Yeah, yeah. So uh, the uh, website address, Speaky.com, it's super easy. And this is the um, my school's website where you can find information about our textbooks, flashcards, everything. And we have a big blog there. Mm. Listeners, if you're listening to this, you're going to see all the description below. Viewers, you will see this. Uh, you will see um, uh, the link on your on your screen right now. So, um, listen, um, Ina, I, I want to ask you this question: What kind of uh, students come up to you? What's your cat categories of students come to you that want to study Ukrainian? Mm -hmm. Who are your students? Are they Ukrainians that sorry, uh, British and um, international students that maybe Ukrainians that left uh, Ukraine a very long time ago, generations past, like myself? 
no, I wouldn't say a generation. I, I, I was born in Ukraine and came here when I was young and I kind of lost that Ukrainian um, language. Um, you got those kind of students. Do you have stu uh, students also, the ones that want to study Ukraine because of what's going on in the war and there's going to be investment going on soon when the Ukraine wins the war? Uh, who are your students primarily? Uh, yeah, so I teach uh, Ukrainian language um, in English. So therefore, my uh, biggest audience are English-speaking countries. Mm -hmm. And number one is the United States. Uh, so it's like, uh, I think 40, 50% of our students are from the United States. Uh, then goes um, Canada, UK, Australia, and other countries mm -hmm. <laughs> but this are uh, the 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 statistics from my like social media like youtube and uh, also our students who buy our individual lessons or courses uh, yeah and um so before the uh, full scale invasion uh we had um students uh who learned ukrainian language because they are heritage learners and they have uh, some um connections with ukraine they have roots mm -hmm. and um they are ukrainians in the second third fourth and so on generation so they were raised in ukrainian traditions for example i have a student from the united states um, her name is stephanie mm -hmm. but uh her mom and her grandma call her stefka Stefka. About Stefania. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, well, the name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Stefka, Stefania. Uh, so, yeah. But, yeah, so they, they um, so she has this, um, like, um, English name. Yeah, mm -hmm. but it has Ukrainian equivalent. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's fine. That's cool. Uh, yeah, so, um, yeah, so there's um, people uh, who uh, have, uh, uh, like, family connection, they uh, would like to learn the language in order to um, to save it, in mm -hmm. order to start speaking the language of their ancestors. It's very important to them, especially when they lose their, um, like, members of the family. They feel some nostalgia, mm -hmm. and they want to, to learn the language. And uh, in the United States, it's very popular to talk about your origin, Mm -hmm. I, I know that uh, people, they explore it, they talk about that, and uh, therefore we have so many students mm -hmm. from there, even more than mm -hmm. from the Canada. Uh, yeah, and um, also uh, another category, category of our students is uh, who um, have uh, like a girlfriend, boyfriend, wife, husband from Ukraine, have mm -hmm. very good Ukrainian friends. They want to learn the language in order to communicate with them or their relatives. Mm -hmm. Or we had students who came to Ukraine and participated in different like projects like Peace Corps or like Fulbright, or this was like exchange programs for students, whatever, or those who had some business or business partners in Ukraine. For example, I had a student from the um, the UK, and he is a farmer. Mm -hmm. He, he um, had a very big business here, and he had uh, business partners in Ukraine uh, because we have very uh, fertile soils. <laughs> yeah, so he um, wanted to learn in order to communicate with them. Mm -hmm. Uh, yes. Um, yeah. And um, yeah, there, there were different reasons why people learned Ukrainian. There were polyglots or people who uh, liked Ukrainian culture. They they um, liked, uh, um, I don't know, the literature or the myth, whatever. And after the uh, February 24, uh, there were a big um, uh, boom in Ukrainian language. And um, uh, there were so many people who liked to learn Ukrainian language because they wanted to support it. Mm -hmm. They helped at the volunteers, they were uh, host for the Ukrainian families, or they uh, came to the Polish border, uh, they cooked some food for Ukrainians, they helped, um, uh, I don't know, with, uh, with like medicine, or we had students who are the veterans, uh, mm -hmm. whatever, they wanted to learn the Ukrainian language in order to support for, for their job. You know, and I want to say thank you for being on my uh, on my show because I think a lot of hosts uh, host sponsors here in UK and a lot of people that are helping Ukrainians at the moment uh, that probably having difficulties with a language barrier to speak with Ukrainians, yeah. um, especially the older ones. I'm assuming uh, Ukrainians or someone that finds uh, maybe disability Ukrainians that find it hard to uh, learn. Yeah, um, 
sorry, um, English language and the other way, other way around is the host for them to learn or speak Ukrainian. I'm, I'm assuming a lot of people, when they don't know a language, they use sign, lang sign languages and body languages as well to kind of communicate. And it's good to have you here. Hopefully people that will listen to this podcast and listen to this podcast, they can contact you and then you can teach um, organizations, not just students, but I'm, I'm assuming organizations. I think you probably have any cases of that, no? Um I have a student uh, who work um, in some companies and they need the Ukrainian language. Mm -hmm. But uh, my uh, next um, like idea, uh, I think I will start realizing it uh, pretty soon, is to teach, to offer uh, business Ukrainian or like corporate Ukrainian courses. Um, I think it's uh, very useful. Uh, and I think it will be extremely useful after the victory when many mm. like experting companies or like uh, building companies, they would like to invest uh, in Ukraine or rebuild. Uh, it will be very imp important, useful for them to learn the Ukrainian language. You know, let me ask you this question. Yeah, What makes you different from uh, if I want to, let's say I want to learn Ukrainian, right? What mm -hmm. makes you what, what makes me want to come to you and study Ukrainian with you when I can go to, there's there's plenty of Ukrainian schools that are kind of popping up like mushrooms here all around UK and London. I can study with them or I can find someone else, like someone like you. What and study. are those uh, schools? Uh, well, you have uh, St. Mary's in Holland Park. You have one in, well, they're kind of for kids, so I, I wouldn't. It's only for kids, yeah. Yeah, for kids. Um, What about Ukrainian institution in London? And that's it. And that's it, yeah. Yes. No, There's no one else in the market? No. So what about if I, I don't know, maybe find a Ukrainian that can speak good Ukrainian and kind of... Uh, it won't work out. Uh -huh. So, okay. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. You, you got me there. I'm, I'm, back, my, my, I'm, back, I'm my back against the wall. <laughs> Go on, you were going to say something. No, no, no. I just, uh, I want to tell you that um, um, here uh, you can learn Ukrainian only with the help of the Ukrainian Institute London mm. and me, and that's it. And uh, I am the like uh, super qualified number one Ukrainian language teacher, <laughs> and uh, I don't teach uh, right now at all. I just I just uh, do this uh, Ukrainian language courses by myself because um, I don't have my team here, and mm -hmm. therefore I do it. Yes, and. Um, also about the project, about teaching some companies. Um, you know that um, many Ukrainian soldiers come to the UK all the time and they got, they got some uh, military trainings mm -hmm. at the military bases. And uh, this um, um, United Kingdom, uh, and this... Um, Defense uh, Ministry of Defense. Mm -hmm. They hire uh, Ukrainians who work at the translators at this military base. And I have a, an idea. Why can't I teach uh, this uh, British military the Ukrainian language? Yeah. Why? Why can't you? Why not? Yeah. So uh, that's my um, that's my idea, and I would like to do that. I have many ideas what I would like to do. And somebody can take my idea and try to realize it. But um, you can do this even first, but I will do it better. Mm, I like that. I like that motivation. <laughs> I like that. I like that not just the fastness, but you're also doing for the better, the quality. Because uh, I, I have in my mind this idea. And uh, I... Um, uh, I've recorded some video lessons about the uh, Ukrainian military vocabulary. So I have some uh, preparations for that. Mm. Uh, and yeah, you can take my idea and you can try to use it, but you don't have anything for that. Mm. And I have already some ideas how to make it. I have some like preparations, learning materials. Mm. So, okay. You're, you're far ahead. Basically, you're far ahead. You're far ahead. Uh, I, 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 can't, I can't compete with that. I, I, I can't compete with that. I'm, I'm, my Ukrainian is terrible. My, I'm, I'm, I speak, I speak as more of a slang Ukrainian. Listen, Nina, now you're here in UK, London. London. Yes. Um, question for you. What do you think about UK, London? Do you like London? I love it so much. What do you like about London? Um, you know, um, before uh, coming here, 
I had some like expectations about this city. Mm -hmm. And of course, I saw it many times in different movies, TV series. Mm -hmm. I read about it in books. And, uh, you know, my expectations came true. Mm -hmm. And it's a huge, beautiful, uh, I don't know, it's uh, like a real royal mm -hmm. <laughs> city. And I like the architecture, it's, its atmosphere. I like it. It's, it's Give great. me three things that you like about UK and London, except from uh, architecture and atmosphere that you just already mentioned. Three things that you like about London, UK. I like it vibe. 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 Yes, I've been to uh, some European um, capitals, but mm -hmm. London is number one. Okay, cool. I like that. What's two? Uh, it's huge. It's huge. It's different. It's multicultural. Mm -hmm. uh, the museums are free. <laughs> so three things. Okay, give me. Can you give? Could you give us three things that you don't like about UK? Uh, medicine. Mm -hmm. uh, bureaucracy. Mm -hmm. It's not, maybe it's not about the UK, but maybe it's about other European countries that uh, people, they are like slow. They, they I mean, they don't have this energy. Uh, they, they just used to live this comfortable life mm -hmm. and um, they, uh, they are not ready to do something more in order to achieve something. Mm. it's yeah in general i don't talk i don't talk mm. about everybody but um and when you try to do something more and you want to do it faster better uh you can't do this but why they, they don't allow you to do that what, why why do you think what you just said there i agree i agree because with you. many ukrainians who came here they want to uh to do something more and better mm -hmm. and the uh, people's society and system uh, doesn't allow them to do that. Mm. And many Ukrainians, they, they got disappointed and then just uh, come back. But why is that? What, you know, I, I, I'm going to say it from my perspective, Ina, and you can say yes or no. When I used to go to Ukraine, people in Ukraine thought I used to live a good life here in UK. Mm -hmm. you know, that. But when I said to them, taxes are here high, the rent is high, you can get paid well, but depending on what your job and so forth, things are difficult here. Then I am happy, in a way, I am happy that Ukrainians are coming here. And I think a lot of Ukrainians, Anglo-Ukrainians that live in here for a long time and even the British people, they're happy that you're coming here and seeing the real picture of what's going on in Europe. Europe is suffering. It's not how it mm -hmm. used to be and UK is not how it used to be. I work for NHS, so I know the difference between uh, problem with medicine, education. Uh, there's great things that happen here in UK has been prospering and Europe has been prospering for many generations. And obviously now it's slowing down, as we know, strikes are constantly happening here. I've been here living for 25 years. I've never seen so many strikes in my entire life. So many strikes. Um, education is not as great as possible. We, we have loads of, loads of issues. I'm happy that you're coming here and realizing that, like you said, expectation. We thought the expectation would be high. Many Ukrainians come in and think, wow, this is terrible, that's terrible, that, that, that. So when Sasha used to come, or Alex used to come to Boris Bukhev, he was right, but we never believed him because life here is good. Now, now you're here, you're seeing the picture because there's many Ukrainians that came in for the first time today, about 50 to 60,000, they saw the situation, they turned around and went back. I tell you, you know, this is, the, this is the honest truth. Thank goodness you're here, you're teaching, you're doing great, wonderful things. But many Ukrainians that have left in Ukraine, they still think like the Ukrainians that left here and now here and saying, hey, life here is not as great as we thought it was. Yeah, many of my um, Ukrainian friends whom I met here, mm -hmm. they uh, came back to Ukraine. And when they came back, they feel absolutely happy, even if they hear uh, like uh, air alarms mm -hmm. every day and um, uh, missiles, whatever. But they say, oh, my God, food is amazing. Service is mm -hmm. on a super high level. Mm. I don't know, restaurants, everything. Um, you, there is a very big diversity of everything and they feel absolutely happy. And they can realize their ideas um, quickly. But you know, you know, you have to understand also, um, you know, you're saying all these things about UK, the lovely stuff, and you're obviously saying things that things that needs to improve in this country. I absolutely agree. I would like to say that even myself as an Anglo-Ukrainian and maybe British and English and international people, that seeing what's going on in Ukraine, we are saddened what is happening in Ukraine, but we also learn a lot from you as well. Mm -hmm. We see that drive. You know, you, you, when you lot come and say the service is not the greatest here, yeah, the service is not great here. 
you know, and we can learn from you because a lot of Ukrainians, just like the Polish, go on, go on. Uh, the, I'm not sure if uh, many people want to learn from us. Well, we will go, we, we can discuss that. <laughs> we can discuss that. But I'll say just like the Polish, when the Polish came in 2004, 2010, 2000, there's loads of them here, loads. It's about the highest peak was 3 million. Mm -hmm. Polish people worked hard in this country. Mm -hmm building side, they're the best. I mean, if you say Polish, uh, if you say construction, Polish, everyone will say, wow, these guys are like machines and they work hard. The same as Ukrainians are coming here, they're working hard as well. Women as well are working hard. Just the Polish, Lithuanians are doing Latvians, all these East Europeans, they did the same now what Ukrainians gone through as well. Yes, I agree with you. Not everyone's gonna agree with you, say, oh, and we're happy to see Ukrainians here, especially what's affecting the world because of the finance, we're financing the, the war so Ukraine can win the war. And we have own problems here, like NHS is crumbling, education is crumbling. There's loads of problems in UK and London. We can talk about problems as much as we want, but we all, we all wanna find solutions and so forth, yeah. I came here not just uh, to start my life from scratch, and to forget about Ukraine. Mm. I came here for some period of time. I don't have any like expectations to stay here and live forever and to be an immigrant. Mm. I came here like to, I fled from the war uh, and I'm happy to have an opportunity to live here come life. Mm. And I've got um, yeah opportunity to work here uh yeah. to leave um i got some support and i appreciate it but um yeah i just uh yeah i just uh, live my life here and do what i like and what i can to do here yeah. and that's it and uh and of course i speak english very well and helps me so much mm -hmm. and uh, yeah even if i have this um skills i try to um uh to be integrated into society and to uh, have British friends to uh, to do something for them to tell them more about my culture, my language. I cooked food to my British friends; they love it, mm. and I'm absolutely happy about that. But yeah, I just live in the moment right now and do what I can do, uh, and therefore I feel I feel okay about that. I feel happy. Yeah, but if some people they they came here and they would like to stay here mm. maybe for the rest of their life and they um, decided to uh, finish with Ukraine mm. and they don't want to come back there. So I think maybe it's, it's yeah, it's tough for them. If, if I came here with this kind of um, idea, I think it, would be, it wouldn't be so easy for me. But I don't think f about that. I don't have this idea. Therefore, it's, that's, it's a different experience. But, you know, thank you for that. Thank you for that, um, for sharing that story because everyone has an opinion. Everyone has a free of choice. You came here, you are grateful for what UK has done for you and it's doing for you. You are teaching Ukrainian uh, Ukrainian language to international students, British, English here, because we, of course we mm -hmm. live in Britain. And you can see the good and the bad. And you, if you can't see your life here, that's perfectly fine. You are happy to, we, if you're happy to go back to Ukraine, that's absolutely fine. I'm obviously, I'm happy to stay here because this is my home, this is my childhood. And I think no matter where I'll go, London will always pull me, no matter what. My wife is, um, my wife is Vietnamese. And if I went to Vietnam right now, I know London will always pull me. So I'm happy for you to share your experiences here and you care how you see it as from a, from fresh Ukrainian eyes, if you know what I mean. Yeah, because yeah. you are fresh, you know, if, if I'm gonna talk about slang, then you're, I would say you're fresh from the boat. You're just proper, very, very, very new, you know, very new. If you lived there for maybe three, four years, it would be a very different story because there's many Ukrainians that come here. I had Alina and season season one, sorry, season one in episode 12, she said as well, she said he, he, she and her husband came here originally for one year, mm -hmm. then two, then three, then it turned out five years they never went back to Ukraine again. Obviously now they go on holidays and so forth, but it, it just turns out because life is, London, London is a, um, a mega, was it? Um, megapolis? That's it, megapolis. A megapolis uh, a city, uh, loads of internationals, uh, many things to do. It's very driven, uh, driven thing. If you've got a job that you love to do and you love what you're doing, time will fly in seconds and uh, you want to stay here in London, especially depending where you live in London as well. I live in North London, it's, it's a bit of a, 
a bit of a um area to live in you you see um 100, 198 different nationalities in in one area i've never i've been in ukraine i've never i've never i've never seen that before in ukraine but it is what it is anyways you see your your opinion matters and uh, because this is season two in in english and a lot of international people are going to be listening to this we're very interested in ukrainians that know english and they speak in english in our in our episode but also your experiences here in uk you teaching ukrainians to international students now what some of the reasons that they want to learn ukrainian uh it's um to have uh this real connection with Ukraine, not with the help of the like intermediate, um, oh, uh, intermediate international uh, media resources, but they want to um, fulfill it through their, I don't know, through their eyes, through their hearts, to learn the language, to come there, mm. to speak to people, to read Ukrainian media resources in the Ukrainian, to know it, how, how it's like. Mm. there you've mentioned um you've mentioned before to me you know that when you went to when you came to uk first time you went to oxfordshire yes tell me your story from oxfordshire what happened down there before you came to london um it's an I, interesting story i want to I listen to it but i want to listen to this in english uh how i came here and my my experience your, your experience yeah what happened in oxfordshire um, so I came um in the UK on the December the fifth, uh a year ago. And um I came here uh, as a refugee according to the scheme uh for Ukraine. And uh according to this uh program, uh you you can't just um uh you can't just um come here by yourself and just find a place or rent a place. You have to uh, first of all, to find a, um, well, while you are in Ukraine, you need to find a host family mm-hmm. who would like to accept you. Uh, they can give you like a room where you can live, mm-hmm. and they are like kind of responsible for you. And uh, when you find them, uh, you fill in the application, uh, and then you just get this invitation from the government. You, you just take it and you just come with it. You don't need to have a visa or anything else. You know, can I just can I just stop you there? Yeah. You use the word refugee. Why is it yeah. a lot of Ukrainians don't like when we call you refugees? We you you like us. You want us to call you that you guys are temporarily running away from the war. Why do a lot of Ukrainians don't like when we use the word refugee? Yeah. Um, are you refugees? Yeah, maybe uh, I don't like the way it sounds too, but that's true. Mm-hmm. Actually, um, yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe Ukrainians they want don't want to have this comparison with other uh nationalities who mm-hmm. had to flee from the war. Maybe it's somehow humiliating for them. Mm-hmm. I don't know, but yeah, I tell you how how it is. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, um like yeah, I'm a refugee, but yes, uh like right now I'm just like uh like a like the UK um gave this opportunity that yeah, I came here at the refugee but i don't have this refugee status because i've got the resident the residence permit so mm-hmm, i'm mm-hmm. a resident of the uk mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so i'm just like a normal person with the all rights so wouldn't it be better for the british government to kind of change the instead of word using refugee to another thing because uk gives ukrainians uh was it B- bpr yes gives you all the kind of um a right to work yes you know Yes. Most people that come in, even immigrants, refugees, when they come in, they don't have right to work yes. unless they yes. go through the process. Yes, so yes. Why it's c- different. It's different. Absolutely different. So Ukrainians, we have um, like better situations, mm, better most, conditions. Yeah. Mm, yeah. And therefore yeah. other uh, nationalities uh, don't like Ukrainians because when we came here, we got uh, everything. Nicely treated, basically. Yes. Uh, but... Uh, yeah um so what what i want to say yeah so i came here um on the 5th of uh december last year and i had a host family and i lived there for a month only uh so actually i had an idea to stay uh, um 
uh, their place for some period of time and then to move to, uh, to Oxford mm -hmm. uh, to run their room uh, because it wasn't really convenient to stay at their place and to travel all the time mm -hmm. to teaching to teach the courses. But I had to flee again here in the UK because uh, one of the um, family members, he had uh, some very serious mental problems mm -hmm. and he started to uh, behave uh, weird and um, uh, he didn't talk to anyone uh, and but he, he didn't speak to me but sent me lots of weird messages mm -hmm. and he said about the suicide, whatever. Mm -hmm. And I realized I don't feel safe and I don't like it. Mm -hmm. And therefore, I talked to council and uh, they helped me to change the family. And uh, the second time was very lucky because I um, I met very nice people. They're very kind. And mm -hmm. uh, yes, they they became my um, like uh, parents, mm -hmm. <laughs> my second family. And it was very nice. So yes, um, thank God. Uh, yeah, we, I had to flee. I uh, say I had to flee two times. The first time from the Russian occupation mm -hmm. in Kherson. The second time from <laughs> <laughs> from from like from madness, basically. Uh, yes, uh, crazy, crazy. Yeah, but uh, thank God uh, I was lucky for the second time. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I would just like come back to Ukraine for sure, you know, and just and and say, okay, I I I will never come back to the UK. Stop. That's <laughs> it. Yeah, but uh, thank God. Um, uh, it ended very well, and then I I um I taught uh, the Ukrainian language at Oxford University uh, from uh, January till June twenty twenty three for two semesters. It was a great experience, but um, yes, I I taught it at uh, Russian East European Studies, and uh, I was there like a self employed. And I wanted to do something more there, but I didn't have opportunity because you need to to, um, to get some support mm. and financial uh, like help, but from the Ukrainian government or Ukrainian embassy, whatever. But it didn't happen, and mm. I realized that I can't do anything on my own. Um, I can't um, fight against the system, mm. and therefore I realized that I need to move forward and. Um, uh, that's why I moved to London and uh, organized here my own uh, Ukrainian language courses. Wow, well done. I know you wanted to make it more established here. So uh, in Oxford or any other university or even colleges that can do Ukrainian studies. Um, my reason why I think they didn't uh, go completely with it is um, the war still goes on with Ukraine, uh, with Russia. Um, um, the war hasn't finished yet. Once the war finished, I think once... Uh, Ukraine will be integrated and given uh, access to Europe Union. Um, I think then. Um, yes, I absolutely agree with you. Yes, I, yeah. I think that's mm -hmm. when they're gonna uh, they're gonna give the opportunity for Ukrainians to uh, you. you yeah, can there study. will be more international programs, international yeah. students. Uh, there will be uh, more investment into the spreading the language, the culture. Mm -hmm. Then they will have to open this Ukrainian studies. Like, yeah, there are some um, Ukrainian studies. By the way, in uh, Cambridge, there is a very powerful uh, Ukrainian studies. Yeah. center i i went there and uh, i was very surprised in a very good way and i met my colleague there and andre mm. and uh, there are i went to the library and i saw there are lots of ukrainian books and textbooks and you can uh, gift the library the book they will accept it and they will sign that uh, this book was gifted by this person mm. and they are very uh friendly about that but in oxford the situation is completely different mm -hmm. yeah, but yeah. again uh the ukrainian studies was opened in uh 2009 uh in cambridge but of course it was um uh um the money was received from the ukrainian oligarch mm -hmm. well unfortunately <laughs> i guess that's how it happens in the ukrainian so listen, you were in Oxford. You wanted to, uh, you wanna, uh, you wanted to give, um, um, teach uh, Ukrainian. Unfortunately, it didn't happen the way it went. I think you, it, you may. I, I would say that you kind of, 
you, you rushed it, but at the same time, it wasn't more of a rush. It was it wasn't right. The time wasn't right. It will be yeah, later on. I think later on there will be. But uh, yes, I rushed it. Uh, but I realized that I don't have any support. Mm. And of course, first of all, it should be from the Ukrainian government, mm. yeah, mm. Or, um, or some other people who can do. Have you tried contacting uh, the Ukrainian embassy? I did. And nothing. <laughs> I I asked them, uh, please, um, can you help me to find uh, the venue uh, where I can uh, teach the Ukrainian language courses? Mm, they didn't help me. So, you know, just like you said, you said uh, UK, you don't like the bureaucracy. So I think bureaucracy kind of hit Ukrainian embassy as well. Yes. <laughs> okay. Okay. So you finished with Oxford and uh, when... Uh, you finished with Oxford. When did you decide that you want to come to London? Or why Why come to London? Because you could have chose Birmingham, Sunderland, Manchester. Uh, of course, London. Come on. <laughs> so you decided, okay. Yeah, I, I traveled to different um, cities. Mm. Yes, but London is uh, huge. Mm. And of course, uh, I have more chances here to find uh, uh, British who would like to learn the Ukrainian language rather than in Birmingham or... What about Cambridge? Because you said that they accepted books and they were happy. Yeah, but but they have already teachers. They don't have any uh, like open you know, vac vac vacancies. Vacancies, and yes, and uh, to tell the truth, uh, yeah, I, I I don't think that I'm ready to um to become like uh, an employee of the university and to teach there and to sign a contract and to mm -hmm. work. Mm. for many years because that's how it works and at oxford i wanted to get like a fellowship for a year or something like that mm. but i don't want just to sign up uh, for, for that and to stay here for like many years to live in one city mm. I, I can't do this I, I can't do this full time because i have my own online business a huge project and i i i, I choose to invest my time there you're more of an entrepreneur. You don't even if people pay you good money, you wouldn't stay. You you want to rather work for yourself, no? Yes, uh, I'm more entrepreneur. Yeah, more of an entrepreneur. Okay. Yes. So you come to London. You come to London. Um, where in London are you staying, and what was your project? I mean, as in, how how did you how how did you uh, moved forward with your project in London? Because as as you know, London is huge. London is nine million people officially, Crazy. unofficially sixteen million people, double double the size. How did you start your project here? When you're afraid, what, what, you didn't even have any support in Oxford. How did you know you're going to get support here in, Lo in I London? I didn't get any support here either. In London either? Yes, I just did it by myself. How did you do it? Don't don't give away your secrets, but like how certain steps you did, what did you do? Um, so um, I finished teaching my uh, course at Oxford uh, in the middle of June. Mm -hmm. Then, of course, I took a break uh, in summer. And then I started thinking, okay, what is next? Uh, what is next? And uh, uh, I, I was thinking about London, of course, because I had some uh, friends and students in London mm -hmm. and me and my British friend, Candice, who is learning the Ukrainian language. We organized the Ukrainian speaking club in May. Uh, so therefore, we had already some people uh, who um, is learning Ukrainian language so um, I realized, okay, here are some people who would like to learn Ukrainian. Um, I know some mm, students there and I realized, okay, I have the audience. Mm. So I didn't uh, do it just without any reasons. I had mm. an idea, okay, I have the audience, I have some people. And then uh, um, uh, I created the website, uh, like a landing page mm -hmm. about the course. I uh, uh, I connect the like PayPal business, so make it everything like um, legit, like a business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So like I'm a, like self-employed person, uh, so I organize it um, pretty fast, and uh, my team who works with me on the online school they help me to do it, uh, and then I started to popularize it, to do advertisement. Uh, through my social media, uh, through this uh, Ukrainian speaking club, I sent messages in different community societies, mm -hmm. uh, and I launched this course two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Who else is doing what you're doing here in, in London? Uh, Ukrainian Institute London, mm -hmm. and that's it. 
that's it that's your market basically there's only two two people do, well you as a person and organization that does it and that's it yes so if i go on google and i write i want to learn ukrainian you both will be the top one or you will be on top of them uh i, I didn't check it out i think the first will be ukrainian is it london i mm -hmm. think mm -hmm. but uh they don't have like youtube or other social media yeah they do but they do they have youtube yeah uh, yeah probably but i i don't think that people can find them via youtube if they search that there they do mostly youtube for uh they invite different speakers uh coming mm -hmm. over and everything yeah yeah but if, yeah. if you talk about the school yeah okay we are school then yeah, yeah maybe yeah you're right you're right you're right okay so you know when you said um about the website what is the name of your website so people will know and that can the ones that are listening that can listen to it and people are viewing and they can see on the screen oh uh, it's uh yeah i think it's ukrainian uh, lessons london something mm -hmm. like that mm -hmm. i i forgot this uh, it's a big um domain i can check it out yeah that's fine Go yeah on. yeah yeah but um because i have uh two websites i have like uh my online school it's pk.com and i have for the um, for this uh uh courses in london so all right could you, yes. could you sell, could you sell yourself right now um can you sell your business to us to the audience right now what sell it sell it to us let's say i'm british and i want to learn ukrainian right now sell it to me if you want to learn the beautiful ukrainian language if you want to have this connection with it uh you're welcome to join my ukrainian language courses there are two groups for a one level it's if you're an absolute beginner you're welcome i will start teaching you from scratch we will learn the alphabet how to read uh, the basic ukrainian words and then you will feel like confident mm -hmm. i have a very good program and for a two level it's like um like um pre-intermediate Mm -hmm. You have some basic knowledge if you know how to um read in Ukrainian, you know basic grammar, some basic uh, vocabulary topics, then if you want to progress more and to become intermediate, then that's your group and we meet two times per week. Uh one one uh time we meet uh, in an office in the, uh Harrow Road, uh Maida Hill. Uh, in the business school, uh, we have a very nice meeting room there. And uh, the second time we uh, via Zoom. Uh, so it's very convenient. And um, yeah, you're welcome. It's nice. And um, the website is speakukrainianuk.com. Thank you very much, man. You sold it to me straight away. Do you have any social media? Uh, yeah, social media. I have an Instagram account at Speak Ukrainian Language, uh, YouTube channel, Speak Ukrainian and uh with the, using this two marvelous words you can find me on tiktok linkedin um facebook yes. i'm everywhere yeah so you're welcome um your students usually for um okay find you one thing but where which social media do you use the most is it instagram and number one is youtube youtube yes uh number one is youtube uh, and also, when people Google me, they can find me uh, with the help of my uh, like blog, mm -hmm. uh, website, and YouTube. And then goes Instagram, and then TikTok, Facebook, etc. What challenges do you face? What you're doing right now? Do you face any challenges? Um, uh, yeah, um, challenges like doing courses here. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, I want to say that it was very tough to launch these courses and I feel very uh, exhausted right now because it took lots of my energy uh, to do that and um, I had some expectations to um, for this course but I, I wasn't able to collect the full groups mm -hmm. as I wanted. Uh, yeah, because of course this is the uh, first mm -hmm. time Yes, and uh, and I didn't have a lot of time to do that because I wanted to launch it uh, in October, not in November or in December, because you know mm -hmm. it's wrong time to do that. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm, yeah, and of course you need to have more support, more advertisement, whatever. Uh, so I did my best, but actually I'm very happy with the result, and this is my first step. 
and I think uh, in the future I can do some more projects and um, uh, not only language uh, courses here, maybe some business Ukrainian or teach some companies the Ukrainian language and maybe I can uh, collaborate um, because among my um, students subscribers like British ones here. Mm -hmm. Some of them, they, of course, they uh, are interested in uh, Ukrainian language and they interested to uh, make some business there. Mm -hmm. And um, perhaps I can um, help them to do that. Maybe I can create some project that can uh, connect um, British with the Ukrainian, mm -hmm. like, I don't know, businessman, whatever, and to help them, I don't know, I think it's a very nice idea. If you're interested, let me know. You know, what motivates you to do what you're doing now? Uh, it's uh, my sense of life. It's my language front. And uh, yeah, it, it's, uh, yeah, it motivates me to, to go against the, uh, the evil, which is Russia. Mm. This uh, country, as people, they want to uh, destroy, to vanish Ukraine, our language and culture, and this is my fight. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, when I do this, I feel better. Mm -hmm. I feel like this is my investment into the victory. Mm -hmm. um, and... Yeah, it it just fulfill it it fulfills my life and makes sense and I'm very happy about that when I see how people start speaking Ukrainian how it helps them in their life uh, it's a big joy and yeah mm. that's that's what I do. Thank you. If I was going to come to your speaking club to attend, yeah. uh, could you tell me a little bit more what what am I what can I expect from a speaking club your speaking club? Uh, the Ukrainian speaking club um, happens uh, once per month, and we usually meet at the Ukrainian social uh, club. It's on Holland Park. It's a great location, and there uh, you can come and speak uh, Ukrainian for one hour and a half mm -hmm. with uh, other um, mm, British who learns Ukrainian language. So you can uh, share your experience with them, and you can practice speaking with the native speakers. And we choose the topic and there is a support and you can have a language partner. And after that, you can um, have um, uh, some Ukrainian food there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's very nice. And drink Ukrainian beer or wine. And that's uh, an amazing experience. You know, you're talking about food, wine and all the things. Your international students, a majority of them knew who Russia was. We know this. And if the ones that are saying that they didn't, you guys know. The ones that knew who Russia was did now Ukrainians are teaching them that Borsh is Ukrainian, Vareniki is Ukrainian. Did you have some international students that thought Borsh was, was Russian or certain things? No. No. So all your students knew that? Yes. Wow, your students are very smart. Because the students I know, they they thought Borsh is Russian. Even or some Russians say, oh, Borsh is Ukrainian. I mean, Russian. It's not. I, th I think they, whatever Borsh they do in, in Russia is very different Borsh than they do from Ukraine. Ukraine, because Ukrainian one is red. Go on, go on. Yeah, yeah, I know. I just, uh, you know, I just, um, um, on my YouTube channel, I just teach sometimes some cultural things. Yes. Or, for example, I had um, a video lesson um, about um, stop saying uh Na Ukraini. Na Ukraini. Or I also have um, stopped writing uh, uh, Russian uh, with a capital letter mm -hmm. <laughs> in Ukrainian. It's it's a uh, by the way it's an official rule in Ukraine. You don't have to write Russia with a capital letter. Is that just for Russia or is it just in general? Just for Russia. Okay. Okay. Cool. Okay. And I teach that my students too. In English, even when I write, when I type uh, Russia, Russian, I type with a um, small letter. Could you give me? Uh, could you give me some fun, fun stories that you have? That why some um, some international students want to study Ukrainian? Any fun one? Is it because they uh, is a marriage mate? Is it someone they like in a class? Maybe the one of the one thing is it the fact that they were in Ukraine once and they said, "Hey, 
I want to study because I mean uh, learn Ukrainian because I met a woman down there and I need I need to know how to communicate with her. It was a business study. Some of the interesting stories you can share with us. Any fascinating story that you know? Uh, first of all, I want to say that I don't like students uh, who I don't like men students who learn Ukrainian because they have a Ukrainian girlfriend. Mm -hmm. Why? Because. Uh, uh, they uh, give up after the first quarrel. Really? Oh, yeah, yeah. because... Of the <laughs> yeah, 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 okay. then you have a student. Um, I had a student. He had been learning Ukrainian so hard. It was so tough to teach him. I invested so much time, all my heart, mm -hmm. soul, whatever. And when he started speaking well, and I feel finally... Uh, and then he says... Uh, I broke up with Elena, so I stopped teaching the language, learning the language. I say, okay, I'm not going to teach this kind of students anymore, personally me. Okay, <laughs> okay, it's a joke. Um, yeah, but um, it's very uh, great stories when um, uh, students, uh, they start learning Ukrainian language because they have Ukrainian roots and then they mm. uh, find their relatives in Ukraine. Mm -hmm. They uh, find uh, where they uh, their their um, um, their grandparents were from. Mm. Uh, they uh, analyze their family names and they come to their villages mm -hmm. where their parents were born, whatever, and they find some connections there. And they, the stories are fascinating. Um. You know, I've got a question for you, which is can be kind of upsetting for Ukrainian to hear this. I've had a lot of um, British say to me, why are the Ukrainians in Ukraine? Um, because obviously in Ukraine, people speak either Ukrainian, Russian, or you got a bit of Polish. Why is Ukrainians in Ukraine um, arguing what country, uh, what, what language they speak in Ukraine? Some, some British, they think that uh, Ukraine, Russia, and Belarus are the same people. What is your input on this? Uh, I want to tell you, yeah, language, um, I think, is a very important issue is in Ukraine. And uh, I believe there should be a Ukrainian language in Ukraine uh, because right now we are fighting and um, southern Ukrainians, I say 100 southern Ukrainians die for our uh, independence, mm. for our language culture to um, save it and uh, we are fighting for the modern democracy in the mm -hmm. world mm -hmm. Modern democracy. because if ukraine uh, lose um the whole world will lose uh, the full the whole civilized world will lose mm -hmm. it's a big thing uh so um russia came to replace um our language our culture our everything and of course, it's a big issue, and uh, we need to fight for the Ukrainization and to spread the language, because everything that comes from Russia it kills us. Okay, and um, my final question on this is: Why should we learn Ukrainian? English is international language. If I go to Spain, I I I know Spanish or English. If you if you go to Ukraine, <laughs> Ukrainians don't know <laughs> English. Yeah, it's... <laughs> okay, it's not to think about the language. It's to think about uh, your attitude, about your connection. Mm -hmm. Because if you want to uh, know Ukraine, if you know to go deeper into its um, mindset, uh, if you want to communicate with local people, if you want to feel freely there, if you want to learn about Ukraine in their uh, original resources, if you have Ukrainian friends, relatives you won't be able to have this full kind of experience without the knowledge of the language mm -hmm. and um final final question is how on average i know everyone's different but on average um from your courses what you do on average how long does it take to learn ukrainian language to let's say i would say like intermediate level oh intermediate uh, uh it's it's a lot um so of course it depends on different factors mm -hmm. it's how much time you're going to invest in learning ukrainian whether you're going to learn it once per week or several times per week 
or every day, uh, whatever. It depends on different things. But usually, uh, for the average student, it it takes like maybe one year, one year and a half to reach solid intermediate level. That's crazy. That's that's almost the same as Ukrainians learning English right now. Yes, the same. Same. Wow, crazy. You know, I want to say thank you very much for being a guest on season two, episode four, uh, with me uh, on Cosa Talks. I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask you final question. Okay. Final questions. I promise. What would you like to say to the British, uh, British um, audience that are going to be listening to this and watching to this podcast? What would you like to tell them? Uh, I want to tell you first of all, thank you for supporting uh, Ukraine and um, Ukrainian people. I appreciate it. Uh, second of all, if you want to learn Ukrainian language, you're welcome. I will be happy to support you. Yes. And um, uh, yes, I think um, Ukraine is an amazing country. And uh, yes, you're welcome to explore it. Um, after the vic- victory, you're welcome to come. I will be so happy to um, accept you. you. Yeah, because I have an idea. Yeah. Um after the victory I would like to open my Ukrainian language and culture center in Kyiv. Mm-hmm. So um when you will come to Ukraine you're welcome to be my guest there. And I want like uh, everybody who comes to Ukraine and they think okay where should I go first? And then you should go to my language and center culture <laughs> because there you can uh learn something more about ukraine the language um yeah this is crazy because my other guest said the same thing he said if you guys are coming over yeah she said to me uh come to my restaurant first so it's going to be crazy you got people going to be dividing they're going to be coming to your school and to the restaurant as well yeah because uh, there won't be a restaurant in my school for sure (laughs) but uh it will be like cultural center too because you can just come there and explore something about the language and culture and yeah i just want like um i have many foreign friends and have lots of british uh, friends who help me so i would like to pay them back and also to host them and to to show them the city uh to I don't know, to to cook some food for them, Ukrainian one. Yeah, you know, thank you for being grateful for to the British. Uh, as an Anglo-Ukrainian, I want to say also say thank you to the thank you for the all my friends and families that have um uh, hosted and uh, sponsored uh, Ukrainians here in UK. Uh thank you to all to all my friends um that have been uh, so welcome to Ukrainians, also being nice to them as well. And thank you enough for not just you and so many other Ukrainians being grateful. I know there's bad Ukrainians here as well, but I'm not going to mention about it because we can we can, we can go for days and uh, never ending story, go in circles about what's going on. But anyways, thank you. And thank you for Ukrainians that are coming here as well. I want them to, I want Ukrainians to understand that Europe and UK is not as um, uh, as we Ukrainians expected. Uh, how great it is. There's there's loads of issues here, but we're going to talk about good things as well. So, you know, thank you very much. Thank you for for teaching Ukrainians, uh, Ukraine uh, to foreigners, uh, Dafin. Uh, thank you for not giving up because even your story is inspiring. Um, you could have gave up many times. Like Oxford said, this, 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 this. He said, that's it. Fuck that. I'm, I'm not going to do that. I'm, I'm going to do my own thing and cut myself in the corner, but you never gave up. And you now you moved to London. Uh, you got a speaking club, and you got your team now. You got you got YouTube, you got Instagram, you got Facebook, you got LinkedIn. You have your own website as well. So all that thing will be in the description for you. You want to learn Ukrainian? Talk to Inna. You want to learn Eng- uh, English? Talk to me and to other people. I'm joking. Don't don't come to me. I don't I don't. I'm not a teacher. I'm a, I'm over a podcaster. Listen, Inna. Thank you very much for being on season two, episode four. My last words: I say these in Ukrainian. Uh, and English, I say Slavo Ukraini, glory to Ukraine. Thank you very much, and glory to the to the king. Do you say that? God uh, bless the king. Listen to her. Thank <laughs> you very much. <laughs>